Thank you, Sina. Our gospel for this morning comes from the gospel according to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, have you ever lost your checkbook or credit card? Yeah, it's not enjoyable. Or had your wallet stolen? Yeah, it is a giant pain, right? Huge pain, because you have to close all of your accounts and open new ones in case somebody tries to clean you out or steal your identity and take out loans in your name and destroy your credit rating. There is a whole industry that has sprung up around protecting ourselves from identity theft with companies like LifeLock, right? It's kind of a weird world we live in, a little weird. And it's weird in another way too. In today's world, we are surrounded every day with advertisements that tell us we're not enough. They tell us, if you buy this car, you'll look cool. If you whiten your teeth, you'll be acceptable to the rest of society. If you use this deodorant, you'll stop sweating and you'll finally have friends, right? (laughs) If you drink this beverage, you'll be one of the pretty people, right? None of it's true, except that the deodorant would be an improvement over not wearing any deodorant, but you get the point, right? But if companies are gonna sell their product, they have to send a message that if you don't have their product, you're not enough, okay? And when we hear a message over and over again, even if we know it's not true, we slowly start to believe it, Anyone who has lived through emotional abuse will tell you that's true, You can know you're not stupid, but If you've been told you're stupid, and when you've been treated like you're stupid, you start to believe it. And it can take a lot to undo that. I think of the world our grandparents lived in, right? When there wasn't as much technology, when there wasn't a TV in every home, when there weren't multiple screens or multiple devices in every home. And I think that might have been easier. You know, these days I'm on screens all the time and so are most of us, right? Now I'm playing word jumble or watching documentaries because I am a huge nerd, okay? But people in their teens and 20s are looking at a bunch of social media on their screens all the time. And I think the messages on social media are harder to deal with than the bombardment of advertisements we get because social media is from your peers, and that's harder. Comedian Tom Papa has a great bit about how what people put on social media is essentially a fake, amazing life, okay? He is a firm believer that a simple life is a beautiful thing, so he says no one is living an amazing life, no one. He says they're just posting the best shots they've got, okay? He says they post a picture of the Eiffel t- of them at the Eiffel Tower in Paris. They don't show the 50 hours spent waiting in baggage claim. 
right? They post a picture on a beach in Mexico. They don't post the aftermath of drinking the water, right? Okay. He's got a point, you gotta admit, right? When we look at social media, we forget the joys of living a simple life. We start comparing our life to the highlight reels that people put out there, and it's not helpful, and it's not healthy. Tom Papa says that in his travels around our country, he's found that people are doing great, but they feel like losers like they're not doing enough. So he's got a new book and a new special, both called You're Doing Great, which I love, I appreciate this. A comedian with a desire to bring reality back to our expectations for our lives. Now, what does any of this have to do with Jesus? I have digressed a little bit, I confess, but there is a connection, and the connection is twofold. Identity, and feeling inadequate, okay? With social media, people can put out a false identity, and when we see all the highlights, we feel inadequate, okay? So let's take a look at Jesus dealing with identity and feeling inadequate. Okay, in our gospel, like I told the kids, Jesus has gone straight from his baptism to being out in the wilderness, and he cannot catch a break. I mean, God just announced that Jesus is the Son of God. That is something to go on the highlight reel, right? And in the next verse, he's in the wilderness and the devil shows up trying to make Jesus doubt that he's the Son of God. In fact, he's trying to rob Jesus of his God-given identity and replace it with a false identity that the devil makes up. The first two temptations start with if you are the son of God, do this, right? And both times, Jesus quotes scripture. Both times, he takes refuge in his relationship with God, in his identity as God's son, okay? The third time, the devil tries to get Jesus to define himself apart from God, and Jesus won't do it. He remembers God's voice saying, this is my son, and that connection keeps him grounded. Okay. Can you imagine being in Jesus' shoes? I mean, that might seem crazy, but let's just go there for a little bit. They can be sandals, that's fine. Okay, but just go there with me for a minute. You're the Messiah, okay, the Son of God, and while you may not know everything that will entail at the beginning of your public ministry, it's a lot to have on your shoulders, right? I mean, Jesus was fully human as well as fully divine. So he probably felt the weight of that responsibility. And there might have been moments he felt inadequate to the task. But from the start, Jesus relied on his relationship with God, on that God-given identity as the Son of God. And I bet he relied on that the whole way through. Now for us, feeling inadequate is part of being human, isn't it? Okay. And we can feel that way all on our own sometimes. I remember when my son Marcus was born, he's 16 now and bigger than me, but I remember how hard that first night was. He was born at almost one in the morning and I had been at work all day because he was also born a little over three weeks early. So I thought, oh, this can't be labor. First kid, what did I know? But so I'd worked all day, had him at like one in the morning. I had had no rest. And because he was born early, he was having trouble feeding. And so it's still dark out. And I remember scrawny little baby Marcus crying and I'm trying to, to nurse and it's not working. And I just remember thinking, Women have been feeding their babies for thousands of years. Why can't I do this? You know? And I can't remember what my husband said. I woke him up because I was crying in a giant mess. And he said something to me, and I don't remember what it was. He doesn't remember either. But it was the ex whatever it was is the exact right thing to say. Because he could have said things that would not have been good, right? <laughs> 
But in the next morning, I'm like, thank you, whatever you said. He's like, I don't know what I said. I'm like, I don't either, but it was perfect. So, okay. But we all have moments, don't we, when we feel inadequate. We don't always need outside messages to take us there. But ladies and gentlemen, it's 2020, so we get those too, right? We hear the ads, we see only the best parts of people's lives on social media, and we hear the message loud and clear. You are not enough. But that is a lie. The message that you're not skinny enough, smart enough, pretty enough, strong enough, or rich enough to have respect, love, and acceptance is a lie. It's an attempt to steal your identity as a loved child of God. And Jesus is like the life lock of our God-given identity. He shows us how to safeguard our identity by remembering our relationship with God and reminding us of God's goodness and promise. See, when Jesus went to the cross, he showed that God already loves us and has declared that we are not just acceptable, but treasured and priceless. I mean, think about it. Jesus went to the cross because God so loved the world, right? That includes you. Jesus wouldn't have done that if you didn't matter, if you weren't loved, accepted, and treasured just as you are. I know we all feel inadequate sometimes. We're human and that's part of the deal. But every time we feel like that, we can remind ourselves that God says it's not true. Jesus on the cross says it's not true. It might be helpful to think of those moments of feeling inadequate as attempts to steal our identity. So let's try this. Think of a time this past week when you felt inadequate or unworthy. Okay. I'm watching to see the gears turn. Now, if you've had a really good week, feel free to go back another week to find a moment like that, okay? All right, so have you got that moment in your head where you felt inadequate or unworthy? Okay. Now think of that moment as an attempt to steal your God-given identity as a loved child of God, accepted and treasured just as you are. Okay. Now take your finger, and I can see if you're doing this one, okay? Take your finger and draw a cross on your forehead. Okay? Trace that invisible tattoo and hear the truth. God has declared in Jesus that you are enough. Actually, you're more than enough. God has accepted you as a beloved child of God. You don't have to listen to social media or to advertisements or to that voice of inadequacy in your own head. None of that's true. When it comes to what matters, listen to the voice of God who says, you are my child. Loved, accepted, treasured. You are more than enough. Amen.